Hello students. Today we will be studying about nuclear energy. As the name itself suggests that in this type of energy we will be discussing or we will be dealing with the nucleus. So if there is any change in the nucleus of an atom then there is the emission of energy. So that emission of energy is known as the nuclear energy. So it is defined as the energy released when some changes takes place in the nucleus of an atom. Now, as we have discussed that every type of energy, whenever we study any type of energy, we classify it as renewable and non-renewable. But if we talk of uh, nuclear energy, it is considered that it is new, renewable as well as non-renewable. Means it is a type of energy in one sense it can be replenished. Means it is exhaustible. It is renewable. It can be renewed. But in the other sense if we talk of it then it is a non-renewable. Means if it is exhausted once then it cannot be replenished again. So it, in nuclear energy, there are basically two types of processes. One is nuclear fission and other is nuclear fusion. These processes we will be dealing after some time. But on the basis of these two processes only, we have classified it as partially renewable and partially non-renewable. So this is the classification of this energy. Now, in the nuclear energy, we will come across a new term that is binding energy. Starting in starting with it, we discussed that there should be some changes in the nucleus of an atom. Then only we will be getting this energy. So similarly, we know that uh, in atom we have electrons protons and nucleus. If we consider that uh, in the central part we have electron, in the central part we have nucleus that is containing protons and neutrons, proton being positively charged and neutron being negatively charged impart positive charge on the nucleus as a whole charge while electrons revolve in the shells. So these electrons revolve in the shells and in the central part we have a nucleus having proton and neutron. So it means that if we talk of nucleus, these protons and neutrons are togetherly known as nucleons. Proton plus neutron in nucleus are known as nucleons. These nucleons are bounded by some force inside the nucleus. Means there is some force which is acting on these two particles which do not allow the movement. Means the outside movement of these two particles. They are bounded inside the nucleus. They are not free to move outside the nucleus. So that force which binds them, that energy which binds them inside the periphery of that nucleus is known as the binding energy. But again we know that we deal with atomic number and atomic mass in chemistry. Similarly here we talk of atomic mass and atomic number. When we want to calculate atomic mass we just sum up the number of protons plus number of neutrons. That gives us the atomic mass of any element. But if we talk that the sum of individual mass of various particles means in atom electron, proton and neutron are present. So the total mass 
of any atom should be equivalent to the sum of the individual masses of particles but it is not so there is some difference so that difference in the mass is referred as mass defect means if we sum up the individual mass of all the particles which are present then that gives you the actual mass but what we consider as a nuclear mass is expected nuclear mass so the difference between them is known as the mass defect and that mass defect is converted into the equivalent energy that equivalent energy is given by the einstein equation of energy that is e equal to mc square where the energy equivalent to mass defect is responsible for holding the nucleons together and is called the binding energy of nucleons so we can again here by verify the name of the energy binding means which binds up so the energy which binds up the nucleons in the nucleus is known as the binding energy now the binding energy per nucleon this is the binding energy as a whole which we have calculated but if it is calculated per nucleon then it is a measure of stability of nucleus means it indicates the stability of nucleus and it may also be considered as the energy which is required to separate the individual particles of the nucleus means it is an energy which holds the particles but if we give the equivalent energy to any particle then it will won't be able to hold the particles when then the particles will be free so it may also be considered as a energy which separates the particle but its name indicates that it binds so we define it in the form of binding now the mass defect can directly be obtained by using the stated formula that formula is delta m is equal to z m b plus a minus z my m n minus m n in this formula we have used many signs which signifies that first delta m that is the mass defect next z z we know that it is a atomic mass mp is a mass of proton a is a mass number means atomic number which is equal to number of protons or number of neutrons in any atom m small n is mass of neutron and m capital n is mass of nucleus so these are the symbols which signifies the meaning following meanings now as we have discussed in the above case that uh, it is considered partly nucleus and partly renewable and partly non renewable in that we have discussed that there are two types nuclear fission and fusion so starting with them nuclear reactions these are basically of two types that is nuclear fission and nuclear fusion we will be starting with nuclear fission it was given by two german scientist they were otto hahn and fritz stresemann 
who carefully analyzed the product of their experiments on the bombardment of uranium with neutrons one of the product was barium isotope which emits beta rays and was having a life half life time of 86 minute basically if we talk of nuclear fission it is whenever there is a breakdown of heavy nuclei into two or more than two lighter nuclei that process is known as the nuclear fission if we talk of literal meaning of fission in english we fission means breaking so in that same manner nuclear means break nucleus and fission means breaking so breaking of nucleus into lighter nuclei is known as nuclear fission if we take example of this so its example can be taken as uranium 235 is when bombarded with a neutron then it breaks into two lighter nuclei as we have specified in above definition so it forms molybdenum having mass number 95 plus lanthanum having mass number 139 accompanied with two neutrons with large amount of energy so this is the breaking of a heavy nuclear that is of uranium into two lighter nuclei that is of molybdenum and lanthanum so this process is known as the nuclear fission now nuclear fission is again classified into three categories first is spontaneous second is prompt while third is delayed if we talk of spontaneous fission spontaneous means if we talk literal meaning spontaneous means which happens itself it does not need anything which should be initiated it happens on its own self so spontaneous fission is a fission which occurs by itself it does not need any initiation or in any thing which initiates it or any particle which initiates it when for example whenever a nucleus undergoes fission on its own without any projectile means without any hit of neutron then that fission is known as a spontaneous fission and in spontaneous fission there is a natural shaking of the nucleons in a heavy nucleus which causes its breakdown so spontaneous fission continuously taking place it is continuously taking place in the natural uranium all the time but still we cannot notice means if we have a natural uranium we cannot see that the uh, reaction is going in it because it occurs at a very very slow rate it is not noticeable to us at the same time if we talk of prompt fission prompt fission is a fission in which a nuclei split up into smaller nuclei instantaneously means prompt if we talk later meaning prompt means which uh, happens immediately as we give uh, if we give any thing then its reaction comes on immediately so prompt means whenever a neutron hits the particle it's at the same moment without any time lag it undergoes the changes and about 99% of the uranium 235 fission is caused by 
due to this type of fission only. So we define it as and last is delayed fission. If we talk of delayed fission, as the name itself suggests, delayed means it is late. So as a Whenever a neutron enters a nucleus and first it causes some small changes which lead to the splitting. Means whenever we hit the nucleus it does not split into two parts. First it causes some instability in it and due to that instability when it breaks into two parts then that type of fission is known as the delayed fission. Means it takes some time to break up. But only 1% of uranium-235 fission is caused by the neutrons is a delayed fission. Means during fission process there is only 1% probability that it may occur. So thank you students. This was the brief knowledge about the nuclear reactions and nuclear energy.